Hi, I'm Matt Cruiser from the Carlton Football Club. What you may not know is that I also work in the construction industry for Civil Works and I absolutely love it. There are a lot of principles that I apply in my footy career that are very similar to what I have to do in my civil career, especially when it comes to following processes and procedures on site. To me, it's just a game plan. As players, we get educated on the game plan and are repeated over and over again during pre-season. So when it comes time for games, we know exactly what each person's role is and what they are responsible for. If players don't follow the game plan, we've got more chance of losing and the whole team is impacted. If I'm the weak link and I decide not to follow the game plan and go kick chasing, I'm at risk of losing my place on the team the following week. This isn't much different to the processes on civil construction sites. When we don't follow procedures that are designed to keep us safe and deliver projects to plan, things go pear-shaped very quickly. But on a civil construction site, you don't just stand the chance of losing a game or copying a fine. Contracts get pulled, people lose their jobs, people can die, and you could even face jail time. Stick with me for a few minutes as we take a look at some real life stories of why following processes in the civil construction industry is so important and what happens when we don't. When I first started in the civil construction industry, we didn't have the safety processes in place like we do today. And sadly, in those early days, I witnessed a lot of deaths on projects. As an example, I remember a steel fixer being run over by a concrete adji truck because we didn't have a spotter in place guiding the truck back along the right of way. Dominic, an experienced steel fixer, was rolling mesh out with his hood up because it was raining and so he couldn't hear what was going on around him very well. Without a spotter in place and with Dom in the truck driver's blind spot, the truck driver had no idea he was there. And the first time he did realise he was there was when he saw a body come out mangled in the mesh from underneath his truck. I'll never forget that day because I was 19 at the time. I, I was one of the guys who had to cut him out of the mesh so he could be taken off site. And I'm 55 now and I can remember it like it was yesterday. Not only was Dominic killed that day, but that truck driver never drove a truck again because he was so traumatised by that event. Something as simple as having a spotter in place could have prevented that. Like I said earlier, experiences like these will stay with you forever. So don't take chances and stick to your company's safety procedures. And if you feel something's not right, speak out because you could either save your own life or you could save somebody like Dominic. As a fast growing company that predominantly subcontracts on larger projects for tier one contractors, we believe that if we aren't able to do a job safely, we simply won't do it at all. We're not willing to risk our people, our business or our clients. So how do we decide if we can do a job safely or not? A well-planned job is at the core of any successful project along with its overall safety. The two go hand in hand. I believe that if we get safety and quality right, the rest will follow. When hiring staff, the most important thing we look for is a can-do attitude and a quality fit within our safety culture. If you're entering into the civil construction industry and you want to know how to find a rewarding career with a quality contractor, then my advice would be to understand and know that safety is number one. A safe workplace doesn't happen by chance or guesswork. It starts with supervisors and workers talking about these four steps together. Number one, finding the hazards that can hurt people. Two, figuring out how likely people are to get hurt. Three, fixing the problem by putting controls in place to protect them. And then, four, regularly reviewing the controls and checking that they work as planned. I have had to attend so many heartbreaking incidents and I can say without a doubt the majority could have been prevented if people have paid attention to the importance of safety procedures. Perfect. I've worked on a lot of marine piling and civil projects over the years and here's one thing that's common. They move and change quickly and constantly. So it's very important that we make sure as workers we get into good habits of doing a risk assessment before starting a task or when there's a change. At McConnell Dow, we use a risk assessment called Start Safe. But any quick catch up with your leading hand and workmates using steps like the following will also work well. Firstly, stop, step back, ask yourself, what am I about to do? Think, what could go wrong? What can seriously harm me or my mates? And then assess what controls can I put in place? And then review it, those controls. Are they effective? Is there a better way? And finally, talk this through with your teammates. They might be able to offer even better ways, but it also means 
that they'll be on the same page with you in relation to the task. So take those few minutes to cover off on those steps. Come up with solutions and better ways because that's what risk control is all about. I know it seems soppy to some, but doing this has, can and will save lives. Every action and every behaviour on a civil construction site doesn't just have a one game effect, it has a long term effect, whether it be good or bad. Remember, civil construction is at the heart of so much that makes this country great. And it's what you do now and what you do matters. So make safety a priority.